Hi there and welcome to my first candle review on this channel. Now as you may know if you're a subscriber or you watch my videos you'll know that I'm a bit of a kind of fragrance enthusiast. I love all things that you know tickle your olfactory glands and I think candles really do deserve a mention within my kind of fragrance related playlists. The reason being because although People tend to sort of think of perfume and cologne as the only sort of things that, uh, you know, evoke memories and and are kind of, you know, dedicated towards sort of the combination of essential oils and things like that. But um, it's not the case. You know, candles have been around for pretty much forever and they really do... You know the 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 combinations of of um, fragrance notes and things that they put together now are absolutely fantastic, and they can create so many different um, fragrances from sort of candy floss flavor to soft towels, fresh laundry. So I really do think that I'm going to start to review my uh, candle collection from time to time. I will still obviously be doing fragrances as well, but I, I really want to start to focus a little bit on candles as well. And today we're going to be looking at uh, a Yankee candle. It's Honey Crisp Apple Cider. So without further ado, let's see what this candle smelt like when it was cold prior to it being lit, because there is a slight difference between smelling it cold and when it's actually burning. Now, the way you smell the candle cold is you smell the lid, the inside of the lid, which I've just done. Now, I've had this, the fragrance of this candle trapped in that lid prior to lighting it. The inside of the lid is where all the oils gather, they accumulate, so you get the, the whole spectrum of what this candle should smell like. And it is the way a lot of people in these sort of candle shops, they smell the actual candle. That, that's not the way to do it. You don't want to smell all the other sort of ingredients. You want to, the essential oils to be trapped inside that lid. And that is where you're going to get a good um, reflection of what this is actually going to smell like. Now, to me, this candle reminds me of Granny Smith apples. Now, it's called Honey Crisp Apple Cider. But if I'm really honest... I do not detect any of the cider in here at all. Um, it's not a sort of um, a kitchen spice, you know, um, cinnamony type thing. Um, you can see I've got some sort of spices on the this part of the display, but this doesn't really contain any of those sort of things. And it really doesn't contain any sort of cidery or um, kind of uh, alcoholic beverage in any way. It, all I'm getting from this is apples. It reminds me, and I'm not proud of this, but when I was a child, a very young child, I used to spend a lot of time in other people's gardens, creeping around as it sort of the sunset, and they had just drawn their curtains, creeping around in other people's gardens with my friends, um, taking, uh, or, you know, just relieving them of some of their spare apples if they have an apple tree. Um, or any sort of fruits, uh, pears, apples, plums. You know, I used to have quite a big diet of those sort of things by going into people's gardens. And I don't think I'm the only one um, that would take these. You know, a lot of them were on the floor, but some we would pick from the tree and we would eat our fill of their apples for, um, for free. And this kind of reminds me of that because it's a very crisp Granny Smith style apple smell that I'm getting from it but also you've got this kind of um, where the apples have fell to the floor and got slightly damaged um, and, and what happens then is it, it begins to uh, oxi oxidization uh, begins to take place you cut an apple in half it starts to go brown that's the oxygen oxidizing that fruit and then it kind of has a bit more of a tart feel to it crisp when fresh if oxidized and, and slightly bruised then it's a, a, a slightly more caramel, um, tart sort of um, feel to it. And that's what I sort of get from this. Uh, you know, it starts off very crisp, but you can get this kind of tartness wafting in as well. Um, again, it's a shame that there is no hint of cider on this. It is just a pure, very nice, fresh, too, slightly um, oxidised apple smell. There's a slight kind of now, I don't know whether this is just my mind playing tricks on me because of what you know, eating apples and pears from people's gardens and stuff, but there's a sort of a 
very tiny sort of pear sort of hint to it. Um, pectin, you know, um, the type of stuff that helps jam um, set. I think what they're probably trying to achieve is with the sort of oxidized apple smell that kind of is, is slightly there, it, it creates it, you know, that, that sort of like almost like a caramelization process. And look at that beautiful, um, it's pulled through beautifully within a, about an hour actually with an aluminid on. Pulling through is basically when you get this nice pool of wax. You know, you can see it, it, it well, if you look closely you can see this pool of wax. And you need that because if you don't you, you get um, tunneling or um, uh, a memory ring, which I'll talk about a bit later in this video. But anyway, as I was saying, the caramelization of the apple is in a way what makes cider. Cider is apples that have been oxidized, um, fermented, and so I guess that's what they're trying to do very subtly. Again, to me, it is just a crisp Granny Smith apple with a slight hint of caramelizing, oxidizing, uh, you know, we're well, not going off, but that sort of apple, which is what happens two apples when they're making cider. So I guess that's what they're doing, but I think you do need to have a bit of an imagination and a good nose to know what they're trying to do there, other than just smelling this fresh apple. Now it says, this is how it's, uh, the, this candle is described, it's a scent that revives and relaxes. Fresh, honey crisp cider warming up a glass. Mm, I, I don't really get that, you know, to be honest. Um, the notes, the top note is honey crisp apple. The middle is apple, cider and honey. Now, th there is a slight, a slight bit of honey that you do get, especially when you smell it cold. Um, I don't really get it so much when it's actually burning. And there's a base, um, you know, the, the base note is musk, which again, I don't get at all. Um, you know, I don't get that. Uh, in the slightest bit. This candle is also a premium grade paraffin wax. Um, obviously that delivers a clean, you know, consistent burn. Now, as mentioned before, you really do need to allow it to form a pool of wax, like you can see here. A nice, consistent pool of wax. That way you do not get memory ring or tunneling, which looks like this. And that you really do not need with um, any candle. You know, it's just going to waste your candle away. The way, obviously, you know, to avoid that is to let it form this nice pool. The pool is called a pull, and it depends how warm the place is that you're burning the candle. Uh, if you're in a colder country, then it's probably wise to use what I had on here before called an alumalid. That helps keep the heat in and allow it to form that pool a lot quicker. You definitely need to make sure that pool forms on your first burn and then on the other burns it should uh, form a little bit quicker. But as I say, if you don't, you're going to end up with a ruined candle. There is a way to rectify it, although it is a bit dodgy. And what I do, rather than waste a whole candle, because sometimes you light a candle, it hasn't pulled to create the, the pool, and suddenly you have to go out. You know, if it's only just kind of halfway through a burn, suddenly you have to go out. There's no, you know, there's an emergency. So you have to blow the candle out, and then that will start the tunneling, the memory ring process. So if that does happen, rather than waste that candle, what I do, now I've got an electric oven, I turn that oven on, just, um, you know, get it nice and warm in there. I'll light the candle. I'll then put the candle on a, a decent sort of base in the oven, close the oven up. And now you've got to make sure, one, you do not forget that that's in there. And two, do not let it get too hot. Keep your eye on it. If it gets too hot and you go to take it out with a cool cloth, you'll probably crack the glass. Also, it will discolour everything. Also, if it's got a plastic label, that will start to peel and you will not be able to get it back on. So you've got a pretty naff looking candle. But the key is, put it in there, keep your eye on it, low heat, until that tunnel has vanished and you've got a pool again. What you will have to do is then carefully take it out because the wick will probably be submerged in the wax. Um, so you would need to waste a little bit of your wax, pour it in a polythene bag so that the wick is exposed again, then let it cool down naturally and you've saved your candle. 
So what's the throw on this? And when I say throw, that basically means how much of your house does this fill up with the scent of honey crisp uh, apple cider? Now, the, the way I kind of evaluate it, well, first of all, for me, this fills up a small to medium room quite potently. It is a good one. You know, it throws out a lot of scent. It does slightly drift into a second room if you've got the door open, but at a much, much more milder, just fleeting little sort of smells here and there. So it's okay. It's average. It will definitely, if you've got a, a small to medium room, it will fill that up. If you've got a large room, yes, it would fill that up as well, but creeping through doorways and corridors or whatever, it might make it to a second room, um, but uh, much more milder. The best way to evaluate how well it's doing this is to let the pool form and leave it for you know a good 30 minutes with the pool completely formed, and then go outside in the garden for a couple of minutes you know just get outside get some fresh air for a couple of minutes that resets your nose then walk back in the house and see what you smell and now when i do that it's quite a potent beautiful uh apple smell granny smith apple smell little bits of honey here and there you know it fills up the room and it wafts into a kind of a second room that is sort of the performance i get from this one um, I think that is about it for this quick review on this particular Yankee Candle. There will be more reviews um, as and when I get time. Yes, I want to take my reviews outside, but unfortunately I live in the UK and our weather can be quite inclement and windy. Um, and it would basically... I've got to wait till summer, nice weather, no wind, to get some decent locations in order to fill my reviews. Um, that is the plan again like I say it's always very difficult you know you plan you get time to do a review um, and you look outside and it's pouring down with rain and it's windy so there's no chance I'm going out in that so you I will do indoor reviews but I really do want to get out and sort of do location based reviews um, but uh, that all depends on our weather I'm afraid but I hope you enjoyed this one leave your comments below if you've owned this candle, let me know what you think, um, you know, how, how do you like this particular one. Please subscribe and hit the notification bell, and I will uh, bid you all a farewell. Take care now. Bye-bye.